Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and today we're going to take a look at uh, the ASUS Oplay HD Media Streaming Device, which uh, is this little box right over here with the red light on. And I've got plugged into a 32-inch uh, 720p high-definition television set right now, and also connected to my home network. Um, this device will do a couple of things. It'll stream audio, video, and pictures, either from a USB hard drive, USB uh, flash drive, uh, pretty much anything like that that you can plug into it onto a television set, or you can plug it into your home network using an Ethernet cable, and it will stream uh, media from a shared network drive. So right now it's actually, I'm going to show you how it'll uh, work with streaming media from a computer plugged into my home network that has audio, video, and pictures. So it uh, just takes a couple of seconds to boot up here. It's actually running a uh, custom uh, interface over a basic uh, Linux operating system. Um, and the you know main menu is pretty simple. It's got uh, photos, music, movies, file copy, setup, and that's it. Um, under uh, the setup options, let's take a quick look here. You can uh, put on night mode, which should just change some of the display settings. Actually, I can't quite see much impact there. Um, change the digital output. Under video, you can change the aspect ratio, brightness, contrast, noise reduction, uh, TV system. By default, it assumes you have a 1080p television. I actually have a 720p TV here, so. Um, and that's pretty much it under video. Under photo, you can change the slideshow interval or the trans uh, put on transition effects so that you can view photo slideshows. And for network, you can either put in a manual IP address or have it automatically detect one for you. Under system, you can change the media language, uh, text encoding, you can update the uh, system here with firmware updates, should they become available. There's a screensaver, which comes on if you don't touch it for a while. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and go back to the main menu. And if you're wondering how I'm uh, interacting with it, there's actually a remote control that comes with it. Pretty simple to use. There's a, a couple of buttons on here that you don't use very often, so if you don't read the instruction manual, and the instruction manual is on a DVD, there's no paper one, so you do have to go through a little bit of work to find the instruction manual. But if you don't find it, you might wonder what some of these buttons are for. Um, the one that has a lowercase and uppercase A actually turns on subtitles. Uh, the one that has a little mouth and uh, spoken word here is for um, changing language. But the rest of them are pretty self-explanatory. We've got a back button, we've got a home button, we've got uh, media playing buttons, and so forth. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of different features. In music, we're going to go ahead and browse to a uh, network drive here that I've got some music stored on. And at first glance, I mean, the, the interface is nothing particularly fancy, but it sort of works. Um, and so you just sort of browse through, find the uh, album that you want, and hit play. And then you can rewind, fast forward, etc., hit stop. So there's, there's the basic. Now, the big problem that I've realized here is if you, I don't know if you can see this on the video or not, but 5 out of 411. There are 411 different folders on the shared network drive for music. And, you know, they're arranged alphabetically, but I'm scrolling down, and you can see it's not the fastest thing in the world. So if you want to get to an M or a Z, it's going to take a while. And what's more, you'll notice all of these folders start with capital letters. You have to scroll through all of these before you'll start to see any folders that have lowercase letters. So, for example, I was looking for um, an album that I wanted to play the other day by Mike Doty, and it's not, I, I should do a better job of organizing my uh, MP3s, I realize that, but I have M. Doty, and then I have another one that's called Mike Doty, and that's in lowercase letters, and I have to keep scrolling in order to get it. Here, we're not even halfway through yet.
So you can see the problem here. <laughs> Um, I mentioned this to uh, the people at ASUS, and they said that they were going to report this as, uh, as feedback, and you know, it's possibly something that they can work on in a future firmware update. Um, I don't know if they'll deal with the lowercase and uppercase problem, or if uh, they'll come up with some way to either speed up as you hold down the, the scroll button, or oh, there he is, Mike Doty. Anyway, so there might be a way to uh, speed up the scrolling action, or there might be a way to jump to a specific letter in the alphabet. Um, either way, it's not a great system if you have a lot of music. If you only have a couple of albums, this will work just fine. If you have a lot of music, uh, this, this interface needs a little bit of work. Um, let's go ahead and show you the movie section. So here we are. Um, this, this media device can handle a wide range of audio and video formats. And this computer that I have is actually set up to record uh, videos in um, as transport streams uh, using an old over-the-air high-definition antenna. So this is actually a 1080p video that we're looking at here. The was a and the quality is pretty good. We're we'll watching a commercial here, but let's scroll through. And so you can speed up, slow down. Um, it would be nice if there was a progress bar. This problem is actually with the recording itself, not with uh, the player. So you've got some pretty high quality video there. Um, but as you notice, there's no progress bar. The best you get is you can hit the display button and at the top it'll tell you that you're 3 minutes and 40 seconds in out of 34 minutes here. Um, and if you hit fast forward, that actually goes away. So it's a little bit hard to keep place. I've you know, gotten used to using more TiVo-like software that's easier to follow. Um, you can bring it up after you hit fast forward and it'll sort of tell you where you're at. But um, Okay, so let's go back and the last thing I was going to show you was the photos. Yeah, so that was a transport stream. It'll also do Windows Media Video, DivX, uh, MPEG-4, H.264, a, a wide variety of different formats. So that's one of the nice things about it. Um, now under photos, Let's go in here. And again here you'll notice that the uppercase and lowercase folders are separated. Um, for some reason, I have a bunch of uh, JPEG images stored on this network drive that I took with a digital camera. And I don't know how well this is going to come across on this video, but it's incredibly pixelated. And this is something that looks great in Windows Media Center or other programs. Um, it is nice that you can sort of rotate the pictures and scroll through, but the pixelation makes them almost unviewable. Now, it's possible that part of the problem is that I don't have a good HDMI cable, so I'm actually plugged in using the um, uh, RCA cables to this TV right now, but um, I was less, less than pleased with the uh, video, or with the uh, image quality on the pictures. Um, and that's not to say that there aren't some nice features. I mean, the video playback is good, the audio playback is good. Uh, it's the finding the files that I think needs some work, and that's definitely something that a firmware update could solve. Uh, it also has this file copy feature, which is really neat. So if you had a, a USB flash drive in there and wanted to copy something from your network drive to the flash drive, you could use this to do that without uh, being anywhere near your computer. You could just sit in front of the TV and do it, so that's nice. And then, you know, the main feature that this really has going for it is that there are a number of different devices that let you watch media on a big screen TV. This is the cheapest one I'm aware of that lets you connect to a shared network drive using an Ethernet cable. It sells for about $99. I think I've already seen it for a little bit less than that in some places. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a first look at the ASUS Oplay HD Media Streamer.